On today's show, the prospect spotlight is on Henry Muse, an interesting right-handed defenseman for the 2024 NHL Draft, coming up on today's episode of Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, we break down everything prospects related for you five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Hattie Kalakesh, Director of North American Scouting for Dauber Prospects, joined by Sebastian High, Director of European Scouting for Dauber Prospects and Head Scout. And on today's show, we'll be breaking down Henry Muse's game in detail. He's a big right-handed defenseman available for the 2024 NHL Draft. We'll look at his game in detail, start with the puck skills and the skating in our first segment. In our second segment, we'll break down the toolkit and the habits, break down kind of the more intricate mental elements to his game, decision-making, all that good stuff. And then in our final segment, we will be looking at the projection with Henry Muse, the upside, and which team would be the best NHL fit. Uh, before we get into that, make sure to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Leave us a comment letting us know what you think of the episode, what you think of Henry Muse, if you're interested in your team drafting him. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to leave us a rate and review. It helps the channel out a lot. And make sure to make us your first listen of the day. It's always very much appreciated. So let's get things started here with a profile for Henry Muse. Sebastian, talk me through size, handedness, point totals, team he's playing on this season, all that good stuff. Yeah, so Henry Muse is a six foot, 185 pound right shot defenseman who's been playing with the Ottawa 67s in the OHL. Through 65 games this season, he's racked up 15 goals and 61 points, which is uh, by a decent margin second in defenseman scoring in the OHL. Behind, like, among draft eligibles behind Zane Parekh. And uh, yeah, he's been playing some pretty solid offensive hockey. He is a uh, very smooth skater. Uh, the skating ability is what unlocks like most of his game. And throughout different portions of the last two seasons, he's been able to flash some really impressive offensive activation and playmaking ability. But consistency has been the big question mark with him. But without further ado, I think we can jump straight into the puck skills here because uh they're quite intriguing aren't they yeah for sure i think the of, of the puck skills i really really like the playmaking ability the ability to make a strong breakout pass is a really accurate really strong passer um it's especially a bit, uh, you know uh, clear on breakouts but he's also been you know putting him some decent work on the power play uh kind of circulating that puck from the blue line moving laterally to open up passing lanes um, the passing for me gets a six, six and a half. It's a decent element of his game. He's never going to wow you or flash you some some amazing, amazing playmaking abilities, but he's got the smarts in order to connect with teammates at the right time in the right pockets of space uh, for them to enter the zone with control and speed. Um, and he always, you know, he rarely passes to a player who, who doesn't have a speed differential on the defenseman in front of him. He's really aware of of that when he's passing. Um, he understands how, how much of an advantage it is to create a speed differential on zone entries for his teammates. So when he's got a teammate who's, you know, going up the zone really fast, um, you know, against a defenseman who's starting to pivot, he'll hit him in stride and that's going to be the teammate he passes to. But on the opposite side as well, if he's, if his, if his teammates slowing down at the offensive zone blue line and the defenseman is still backing up. He'll identify that little opportunity of space and pass to that pass to that teammate instead instead of the other guy who's blowing through the zone, right? So the passing ability, especially in terms of decision making, is really really solid. Um, but what do you think of a stick handling ability? I've quite liked it in flashes. The way he's able to handle the puck in quite a tight area is quite impressive at times. He has a fairly mobile top hand, and that allows him to be quite adaptable uh, with his puck handling ability. That said, there has been de a definite lack of consistency in his ability to leverage that puck handling skill to actually create offensively. He uses his feet and his passing ability far more effectively and consistently to create offense than with a stick handling. And part of that, I think, is also systemic. Uh, Ottawa is a team that is quite conservative uh, in their style uh, among OHL teams. They like to keep their, their blue liners kind of glued towards the blue line rather than activating overly liberally in the offensive zone. And uh, that limits how much Muse is able to flash that handling ability when he does have some space and offensive zone possession on the cycle. 
Uh, but that said, like, especially in transition, there have been some really impressive, like, like end to end rushes in, at some points this season. Um, and he has some really impressive physical tools. And like, there's certainly a reason why he was lauded as a potential top 10 pick coming into this year. The raw tools are a standout ability. And even last season when he was playing a mainly like a, a bottom three defenseman and sometimes even bottom six forward role for the Ottawa 67s. Yeah. Even then he was able to flash that, that toolkit and that skill. Whereas uh, this year he has been like Ottawa's default number one defenseman. And he's played a couple games at the forward as well uh, because they have had some injury problems, but uh, it's been like more this season more guarded in, in how regularly he flashes that but he's still been able to just rack up the points because he is playing a ton of power play time and uh when you're playing on the power play with a 50 goal score like luca pinelli in the ohl a lot yeah. of uh, secondary assists are, are quite easy to come by so yeah especially on that power play definitely um but yeah moving on to the shot i haven't really seen much of a shot that really wows me um the, the selection is pretty cool. There's not much power or accuracy behind the shot, but um, I like the timing of them. Uh, he, he takes really good care of making sure that he's shooting at the right times and not just spamming shots from the blue line, which I like. Uh, he's a player who likes to hang on to pucks, to move laterally, open up a, a lane. It's just once he gets that lane, he can't do as much with it as other prospects in this draft. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's not a, a wicked release by any stretch of the imagination, but he's really, really smart with how he uses it. He mainly shoots from the high slot, sometimes even the mid slot. Like he really does activate and get closer in to the goal because he also knows that he's not the biggest scoring threat from distance uh, with his like with any of his uh, shooting tools really. Um, but when he does shoot from the blue line, it is always quite calculated. There's always a real like reason for that decision to be made other than just there's, there yeah. is pressure. He wants to get the puck away from himself. It's often because there is a ton of, of, of uh, screens between him and the goaltender, a bunch of tipping options, maybe even a flyby going by. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he's very intelligent with his puck management in the offensive zone. And that includes the shooting habits. So the habits yeah. with the shooting are far stronger than the mechanics themselves. Yeah, for sure. We'll get into the habits more in detail in our second segment. But to sum it up, he exploits screens extremely well, um, uh, especially on the power play. Uh, but yeah, moving on to his skating, I think the skating is a big strength for me tools wise. You know, there's a there's a significant gap between the skating ability and his puck skills, but I think that you know that's just due to how strong his skating is. Really fluid, his pivots are smooth. Um, he uses his outside edges really well. He's able to um, go from kind of. And I also especially like the uses of his skating, right? Like he's a player who surfs with defense instead of kind of pinching. Uh, I, I see him often kind of do this kind of button hook motion where he's kind of following a player's motion in, in transition instead of just kind of moving towards them, which, you know, it, it'll inevitably lead to gaps behind you and put you on the back burner. If ever you do get crossed over, um, Muse is really good at kind of button hooking with players as they're, they're reaching the red line and kind of following them into the offensive zone, um, which is a habit I really like in a skating ability, but in isolation, I think the skating's among the best in this class. It's really, really, really good. Right. It's very strong. Like from like, the agility, the four-way mo mobility are real clear strengths. He was already like probably the second most fluid skater on the Ottawa 67s as a D minus one behind Pavel Mintyukov. And he's yeah. certainly been the most fluid and, and dynamic skater on that roster this season. And it just hasn't been very close. Uh, and his ability to match footwork off the rush is probably his best defensive tool as well. Like he's able to leverage his skating to create advantages in all three zones. And uh, sure. yeah, like it, it's a, a very clear strain. Like if we're looking at like the actual, at, at our tool grading, system i'd probably give his skating like a seven and a half it's a very clear strength he's yeah. still gonna have to add a little bit more muscle to his lower body like i think explosiveness is one area where he could still work on it a little bit but like sure. the overall mechanics are, are are pretty much spotless for sure my only concern is when your skating is that mechanically sound usually it's actually quite hard to add lower body weight later on exactly. unless you're really focusing on it because it's not going to come organically you're not forcing you know when you're skating so it's not something that comes from exertion and game from multiple reps even if you're playing 82 games a season 
because you're skating so smooth, you're not use, using your, your muscle that much. Um, but if you get in the right development uh, program with the right, you know, nutrition and, and, and fitness coaches, who knows? That could become a big, big element of his game and i can only imagine what henry muse with additional leg strength could do that'll be terrifying uh but that wraps things up for our first segment we'll get into our second where we talk about the toolkit the habits the decision making more the mental stuff and more the interactional stuff in uh henry muse's tools i'll we'll get into that right after these messages from our sponsors at ebay motors passion drive and patience what brings home the winning trophies also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and far more, you're always going to find what you're looking for with eBay Motors. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find what it is that you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, which is available to U.S. customers only, uh, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Alrighty, so moving on to our second segment, we'll be talking about the toolkit, the habits, the decision making, more of the mental interactional stuff in Henry Muse's game. And I think we can start with the toolkit because uh, we already alluded to it a bit. There is a gap between the skating and the, and the skills, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the the skating ability is is probably the standout alongside the flashes of playmaking ability in the offensive zone in his overall uh, like. like game as a whole um but yeah like, like the decision making has certainly been a bit inconsistent especially the, the defensive habits have uh, have had a pretty big divergence between uh, the flashes of brilliance and uh, the longer stretches of uh, hair pulling tendencies <laughs> uh, while, while watching his defensive game at times um like he does have like the skating ability to keep a really tight gap and in some games he does and he's a suffocating player in terms of rush defending and in other games he keeps his gap really loose he's be a lot more passive like there's a definitely an element of, of passivity in his defensive implications quite often but that's something that, that i have seen progressing over the course of this season like my good viewings of his defensive impact have gotten more and more like regular as the year's gone on but uh definitely still some some question marks on that side for sure, I, I keep circling back to Hunter Bruce Davis when I'm when I'm watching Henry Muse. Oh Just yeah, the the the, oh, yeah. the inconsistency and the aggression, uh, right? Like you know, he's at times you're going to see him kind of pinch up hard on players, you know, do that button button hook motion at the right time and with a lot of speed and aggression to force players towards the boards. And other times he's just standing there, and it's like. It, it's the, the inconsistency in the level of, of aggression that he brings game to game is uh, strange to me. And again, reminds me a lot of Hunter Bustavis. And I mean, look at him now. Hunter Bustavis is doing good. So oh, who yeah. knows how that works out. And Kitchener uh, last year in, in Hunter Bustavis' draft year was about, you know, it's the type of quality of team that's about similar to what we're seeing in Ottawa this year, right? Where you have one or two pretty big names. The rest is struggling. The coaching's bad. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of moving parts there. Um, and yeah, I, I think that we could see a similar route progression-wise with Bruce Davis. But moving on to the habits, I think there's a lot to speak of here in terms of what's interesting with Henry Muse. I talked about that button hook motion in transition, which I really like. Um, he's not the type of player to just throw himself into situations he can't recover from. Um, but on the opposite side, as you mentioned, the passiveness is a concern. You know, at times he's just standing at the blue line or just trying to trying to trying to think his way out of problems that like you can't think your way out of. You know, just. Sometimes the right place to, is to move, is to act, and he still hasn't figured out that toggle, right? For sure. Like, like there's definitely been many sequences where he's tr like overthinking his own play, and uh, yeah. that's also true in his on puck game. Like, there are times where he spends too much time trying to look for the perfect play rather than just creating a good one, and mm -hmm. uh, that's been something that he's definitely struggled with a little bit over the course of the last year and a half. But again, like I think that like the flashes of of high end like not not just tools but also high-end composure in flashes and high-end creativity in flashes gives me a lot of hope of the type of player that he can be molded into in the next two three four years and i think hunter bruce davids is a very interesting comparable right like henry muse is a 
mechanically far stronger skater than Bruce Davids is, but has a, definitely a bit less like violence and physicality in his game. And mm -hmm. while Muse's playmaking is a definite strength, it's not quite at the level of Bruce Davids. But mm -hmm. in terms of how they approach the game, it's certainly not dissimilar. And I think that like, one thing I keep circling back to with Henry Muse is that I really do think that his his progression as a D plus one and D plus two is going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, yeah. Like the Ottawa system, like has been very consistently creating players that for, seem to be underperforming at times, especially in their draft years. Um, but uh, as soon as they make the leap into a a, a more fluid system from that con conservative system they have a much stronger foundation of overall habits and uh, and they're able to kind of finally unleash themselves in terms of creativity and skill and they yeah. really progress a lot more rapidly on that front like even luca pinelli as a draft year last year he didn't play at center at all he was getting limited power play reps like he was being like jumped between like pp1 and pp2 for a decent amount of that season and this year they named him captain which i, I was shocked by considering how he seemingly yeah. was was never really in his coach's favor uh, as a draft <laughs> el eligible but uh they named him captain and he's absolutely rocketed up and and is just scoring a bunch and is like the chief creator on that team by a country mile and I could see a similar type of progression with Henry Muse, where, yes, the production is excellent this season. Like, it's just under a point a game, but it, it hasn't necessarily been kind of consistently dynamic for him. But yeah. I do think that he's worked a ton on his underlying habits in his time with the 67s. And considering that it's certainly likely that the 67s are going to be sellers in a year's time, uh, selling players like Pinelli and Muse, once Muse finds himself in a different system, uh, I could really see his stock like start jumping up a fair bit. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that there's a, a lot of value in, in perhaps investing a draft pick that will be likely closer to the second round than, than, than the mid first. Yeah, for sure. I think the main, the main, also the main aspect in terms of decision making for me with him is, like you said, it's it's a lot more systematic than inherent with with Muse, right? Like he's a player who is still kind of developing his ability to, um, to to kind of understand when to get to go all in, when to fold, and and when to kind of call the cards, right? He's a player who's still figuring out the, uh, the timing and execution that it takes to be a pro. Um, and in a system like Ottawa's where it's a lot more, you know, dump the puck out, retrieve in the neutral zone, access the offensive zone, take a shot, start the cycle, rather than it being kind of controlled and structured breakout systems. I feel like with as soon as Muse leaves that system and enters a system where there is a semblance of structure on breakouts, a semblance of... Um, kind of intricacy when it comes to creating controlled offensive zone transitions we're going to be talking about a player who's well above a point per game in a couple of years time for sure um but yeah overall i think that the decision making still needs some work i think that there's there's times like like we both mentioned i mean on the breakout it'll hang on to puck sometimes look for the perfect option i think that as soon as henry muse realizes that all he needs to do is create an advantage not the best advantage um, we'll be looking at a very productive, really effective defenseman at the NHL level because, um, you know, we're, we're talking about a, a player who, when he does settle into creating, just, just you know, settles into creating an advantage, um, is among the best in this draft at doing it. Like, I really like the way he's able to draw players in, to open up space for his teammates, to kind of draw a player into the boards and open up the middle of the ice, especially like there are some really interesting details in his, um, in his ability to control where his teammates and his opponents go. Right. Couldn't agree more. I, I have nothing to add there. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that wraps things up for a second segment. We'll get into our third. Well, we'll talk about the projection at the upside and coming up, which team will be the best fit for Henry Mews. We'll get into that right after these messages from our sponsors at Robin hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar that you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th again, so get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply, and now for some legal info. 
claim as if Q1 2024 val validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to RRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood goal for one year from the date of the first 3% match. You must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing, and Robinhood Financial LLC, member of SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. Alrighty, so moving on to our final segment, we'll talk about the projection first and foremost, we'll get into the upside as well with uh, Henry Muse, and we'll end things off by discussing which team would be the best fit for him. Um, so talk me through your idea of the projection, because it's still very, um, it's very gray for me, I don't have a really concrete idea of where Henry Muse ends up in an NHL lineup at its best, but realistically, what do you see as a possibility for Henry Muse? I think the upside would be that of like a, a heavy transition carrier on a second pairing. Um, definitely more questions around whether that's as a number three or number four in terms of upside. But the flashes of brilliance and and the high end tools, the as you mentioned, like the the, the flashes of of habits where he's able to really draw players in when he's playing with confidence makes me pretty confident in like a, a, a number three upside. But uh, again, consistency has been a big question mark with him, but uh, especially if he's drafted by like a, a development system like the Toronto Maple Leafs, for instance, I think his chances of ending up as a number three would be relatively high. I think uh, getting second pairing uh, power play minutes would, would certainly be helpful in his development as well. Uh, getting more puck touches. He thrives when he has the puck on his stick. Uh, and that's really the area in his game where he builds his confidence. It's not through shutting down opponents defensively where he gains confidence the most. It's his on puck game and the creation of it. And uh, I, while he's never going to be a shut down defenseman necessarily, I do think there's a decent amount of upside with his transition defending and leveraging his stick work, uh, his intelligence and timing and uh, his high end mobility to match footwork off the rush uh, to really facilitate that aspect of the game. Yeah, I think realistically up number three is the, the highest end of his upside for me. I don't really see any top pair potential with him. But, you know, realistically speaking, I think we're talking about a number four, number five defenseman, a player who's either going to be very much a secondary piece on the second line on a kind of bubble contender or a bona fide better piece on a bottom pair, realistically speaking. There's room to grow and add more to that. But we're talking about kind of the realistic projection with Muse. I think that's what we end up with. Um, but yeah, I, I see Muse as the type of player who's going to it's going to really make a contender better in the bottom end of their lineup. Is going to play some key minutes and key moments. Um, I kind of think a bit of like Brett, Brett Kulak when I when I think of Henry Muse, like a really effective kind of analytical darling who's mostly going to have his best impact on as either the secondary piece on a second pair or the primary piece on the third pair. Right? Does that kind of make sense in terms of like not necessarily comparable, but kind of the upside? Yeah, like, I think Muse has a lot more on puck potential than Brett. Brett Kulak does. Uh, like Brett Kulak is one of the best transition defensemen in the league, and I don't think that Muse has quite that defensive upside. But it, it, if you're going along the, along the same lines of like analytical darling, but you swapped some of that like defensive upside uh, and defensive impact for like transition impact and offensive playmaking impact, I can yeah. see that that type of comparable. I, I do. I, I would say that I think that Muse has the foundation of tools and intelligence and composure that when he's playing with confidence i could re i really do see that number three upside i think i'm a, I'm a bit more bullish on him than you are and i have been all yeah. season like i was the one that in, in our in our most recent uh, meeting at dubber prospects i was the one that pushed to have him included in our first round uh because he's a player that i've just had a, a real appreciation for over the course of the last yeah. year and a half and i have just seen so many players struggle to perhaps flaunt their skill in that Ottawa system. And then as soon as they're out of it, they really just pop off and, and how consistently they're able to, to show off their, their creativity and, and their desire to, to, to make an impact offensively. But it remains a bit theoretical at this stage. And, and I can yeah. understand being a bit more passive and, and, and wanting to, to, to push for him inside the first round. But uh, I, I've just been a big fan of the, of the flashes of brilliance and just the raw tools and the mobility with Muse. 
For sure. Um, now, in terms of NHL teams, that could be great fits. I mean, you mentioned the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think that their system can do a really good job for him. But I'm thinking, you know, there's kind of two ranges I would expect Muse to go in. Kind of the 17 to 23 range and the second round. Like, you know, second 35 round, to 40. Right? Yeah. It just it depends on how teams see him. But I think a couple teams are going to have him as kind of one of their top 10, top 15 prospects on their board, their personal board of players they would like. I wouldn't be surprised at all. You know, and I wouldn't be surprised if a team like the LA King is as high on him. A team like, you know, the um the, the the Washington Capitals or the Detroit Red Wings and one of those kind of bubble contenders that um just barely made the playoffs, ends up being kicked out in the first round, that kind of thing. Those kind of those kind of teams could very well go for a Henry Muse at, you know, around 20th overall. Um, but if we're talking about kind of an early second rounder, which of the uh bona fide tank teams would you say would be the most likely to take a swing at Henry Muse? That's tougher. I, I think with the bona fide tank teams, you never quite know. I mean, I think Muse would be a very like Anaheim Ducks style player, but do they really need yeah. another defenseman here? I don't know. Uh, like, like if I mean, they have been back... stockpiling them. Like, is, has true. that stopped them at all? Like, it's, has it's need to stop them at all? Like, but, you know? but, yeah. Like, I, I think one team, like, definitely not a, exactly a, a tanker, considering I believe they're first in the league right now. But I think the Florida yeah. Panthers could be interested in a player mm-hmm. with Henry Muse's profile. Uh, like, he plays. I, I could see them wanting to maybe mold him into like a Gustav Forsling like style of player with perhaps yeah. less of uh, l- less time on ice on the PK uh, than Forsling has been logging in the last couple of years. But I think that Muse can kind of play that type of style where you play perhaps a bit of a complementary role at even strength yeah. on that pairing, but really creates a lot through the combination of mobility and passing skill and, and intelligence and in selecting the right play at the right time. And obviously yeah. Forsling is, has, like made an excellent career for himself by uh, just be- making consistently good decisions rather than searching for the perfect one. And that would be, as we mentioned earlier, a big like thing that Muse has to work on if he wants to to unlock higher upside. And I don't necessarily think that Muse has Gustav Forsling's type upside, but in terms of stylistic mm-hmm. match, I think that could make sense. For sure. The only problem is Florida would have to trade for a pick there because a first rounder belongs to Philly. Uh, but yeah, yeah second would... rounder though. He, 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 yeah. I, I could see I could see him fall relatively far. I mean, it's always a I'd bit random with two falls too, right? I, like, I, I, yeah, I'd be surprised if he ends up in the sixties. Though we're talking about a a, a very productive right handed defenseman, but although he is kind of small, so you never know. Uh, but yeah, other than that, you know, are there other teams that I can see kind of taking a swing at him? Uh, depends the on Buffalo where Minnesota Sabres. is. Oh yeah, they actually, right that would, they do need right-handed defense. I think that would be a great fit. Uh, yeah, uh, Buffalo does need his type of player, um, especially with the glut of left-handed defensemen they've picked up. I, I mean, I don't know why they went and got Bowen Byron. Like, there were a lot of options um, there. Why not? <laughs> I guess I mean, was the there. I mean, sure, just stockpile left-handed D's. But yeah, I'm 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 thinking he, he's gonna be um Henry Muse could very well be a Buffalo Saber. I think that really fits a need. Um and they might just decide to stockpile on right-handed defensemen in this uh in, in these first three rounds, because if they're picking around eighth like there are right now, there are still a couple options. Zane, Zane Perek could very well be available. Um, you know, there's a couple options there, so you never know. Uh, but that wraps things up for today's show. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you want us to talk about next. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, make sure to make us your first listen of the day. For your second listen of the day, make sure to check out Locked On Sports Today to get all your news and updates about what's going on around sports on a 24-7 news channel over on YouTube. Make sure to tune in for our next show as we continue our prospects profiles and our coverage for the month of April. This has been Hattie Kalakesh with Sebastian High, and we hope you tune in next time.